everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy and welcome back to another edition of Foundation Friday for over 50. But before we get into the foundations that I tested this week, I just want to say thank you to everyone for all the well wishes for my daughter and myself. Uh, for last week we had our wisdom teeth pulled. Uh, she had all four teeth pulled. Hers were impacted, the poor thing. She had stitches and, you know, was completely put under. And I just had one pulled. Mine was easy peasy with Novocaine. I had no pain whatsoever. I think I took a Tylenol the first um, day because my jaw was a little sore. But um, other than that, I've been fine. She, on the other hand, had quite a recovery. But thank goodness today is day seven of her recovery. And so she's finally feeling better. I finally got a smile out of her just yesterday. So anyway, thank you for all your comments. Thank you for all your advice about all kinds of crazy um, wisdom tooth stuff that I had no idea about. So thanks for everything. Um, all right, so today's Foundation Friday. Um, I hope it's not going to be too much of a mess. I asked you guys last week which of these two powder foundations you would prefer to see this Friday. And I got to say the votes were pretty much even right down the middle. So what I thought I would do originally is review them separately. I was going to try to wear them each once, see which one I like better, and do the better one first because, you know, now that we're on to the seventh Foundation Friday and I haven't found anything that I can wholly recommend, I really wanted to have a winner this week. I'm getting so tired of trying things that I do not like and I don't think that either of these is 100% a winner, but I do like one of them better than the other, and that is the cover effects, just to cut right to the chase. So this is gonna be mainly a review of cover effects with a little bit of side information on Jane Iredale, okay? So since cover effects was the winner, I'm gonna start with that. So let me tell you um, the basics on this. This is a um, pressed mineral powder. It comes in a plastic compact that has a nice size mirror, and then underneath, it contains a um, little sponge, which I used once and couldn't get any kind of coverage out of it, so I stopped using it and I went immediately to the brush, which is what I like to use. This retails for $36 and it is 0.42 ounces, so less than an ounce. It comes in 24 shades and their shades are divided into three different um, color categories, pink, neutral, and golden undertones. So what they suggest you do is figure out what your undertone is first, then go to that section, and then within there kind of figure out where you fall for light and dark. I went for the shade N30 for light to medium skin with neutral undertones. On the Cover Effects website, it says that it is an oil absorbing mineral powder plus foundation in one, which imparts an instant natural matte finish and provides sheer to full buildable coverage. Uh, it's a matte made healthy formula featuring Amazonian kaolin, kaolin? clay and oil absorbing microspheres to minimize shine and absorb excess oil as well as green tea leaf extract to alleviate skin discomfort and visibly reduce redness. It says it's clinically tested um, to not contain the inflammatory five which are gluten, mineral oil, fragrance, parabens, or talc and as a side note it also doesn't contain bismuth oxychloride which many, many of the mineral foundations contain that I'm slightly allergic to. It makes my face itch, so I look for things that are bismuth free. And both of these products are bismuth free. The basics on the Jane Iredale. It retails for a whopping $52 for 0.35 ounces. This comes in 22 shades and they are also divided into warm, neutral, and cool undertones in the original metal compact. Then for $40, instead of buying the compact again when your first purchase runs out, then you buy a refill, and in the refills they have an additional three shades. For the ingredients, the Jane Iredale contains titanium dioxide and zinc oxide, so it is an SPF of 20, and it's also 40 minutes water resistance. It contains antioxidants such as pine bark extract and pomegranate extract. It's oil and synthetic chemical free, it is certified cruelty free and wheat and gluten free. I got it in the shade Golden Glow. Um, I had a harder time matching myself in the Jane Iredale. Their colors are really 
very colory, so when they say it's pink, it's really pink. When it's golden, it is really golden or really cool. So I kind of a hard time, and then they, they seem to be a lot lighter or a lot darker or went on differently than they looked in here. Whereas I had a much easier time choosing a color that looked good on my skin in the cover effects. And here's how the two compare side by side. But you'll see when I put them on side by side that this one goes on much darker and this one goes on much lighter and sheerer. It was really, really interesting. I always begin my foundation testing by trying the product alone to see how it does just by itself without adding any other products to help it along. And I did that on day one with each of these two products separately. So I have day one footage of Jane Iredale just on its own. I also have day one footage of cover effects just on its own. Um, I think that this video is going to get way too long if I go into day one on each, day two on each, how I tried to help it. Suffice it to say that um, day one of each on its own was not great and they each needed help. So what I decided to do on day two uh, was, as a couple of viewers suggested, was to try both foundations on the same day one on each side of my face. All right, so just to give you the nutshell of what was wrong with it, rather than bringing in the before and after footage and all the stuff, um, I will tell you that on the cover effects, day one without any primer or anything, it just did not go on very well. It was very, very sheer and it was not buildable. Um, it sat on itself weirdly, it didn't sit on the skin right, it was patchy and strange looking, um, and so it didn't look good from the get-go. It settled into pores, it settled into wrinkles. It got shiny after just a few hours. So based on that, I decided that it needed a primer. So with the Jane Iredale all by itself, it was better than the cover effects was alone. So it went on better, it went on nice and smooth, but it is a fuller application because it is a more powdery powder so it did tend to look a little bit more cakey and um, it didn't settle into pores right away but it did settle into some wrinkles and it got very shiny very quickly and stayed that way so i decided that they could both benefit from a mattifying primer and so the footage that i'm going to show you now is from the day that i wore them both on the same day one on each side of my face and on that day, I did use the Cover FX Mattifying Primer because I had used this the week before and really liked it with that product. I felt like it turned the um, Too Faced Born This Way from a complete failure into something that I could actually work with and recommend to some people. So I liked this primer and I thought maybe it would help these both as well. And sure enough, it did help them both. So let me bring in the footage of that day. Let me start with the Cover FX. This is the problem cheek from yesterday, so I'm going to try to see if it can give me a smoother application over there today with the primer. feel like I'm kind of caking it on, but I'm just trying to get it to give me some coverage. This really is very, 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 very sheer coverage. So, all right. Now, here is the cover effects side. And nothing on this side yet. Okay, I'm going to go ahead with the Jane Iredale on this side. So there they are, side by side. Okay, I'm gonna walk around with my face being two different colors today, yay. Um, let me check that in my up-close mirror and come right back. When I applied the Jane Iredale, I felt like it's a much more powdery powder, but it takes much less of it to get coverage. So you can see it's just a very short 
a few swirls into the compact and then onto my face to give me some nice coverage. With the cover effects, it's much more work. Many more swirls in the compact, many more times applying it to my face, much longer application process. Um, but it is much more creamy. It doesn't have that a uh, lot of powder crumbling and flying off as well. And I felt like that made a big difference in um, the feel during the day when I was wearing it. I felt like the Jane Iredale was drying during the day and that the cover effects was not drying at all during the day. So here is the side-by-side uh, -side before and afters uh, for that. And close-ups, let's do cover effects first. Here is the after with bronzer and blush. I'm back for the five hour check-in on cover effects and Jane Iredale. And we'll take a look at the close-up and see how they've done. I thought they both looked pretty good for the first two or three hours. After that, they've both gotten um, fairly shiny, and so I think neither of them are really doing that much for me anymore. I gotta say, they looked really good, and I was looking forward to doing a really excellent review on both of them. And now that I'm back after five hours, I see that they're both quite shiny and making my pores and everything look quite large. So even though it's a powder, it would have to be repowdered uh, either with itself or with something else throughout the day. As far as the pores go, the cover effects side looks better than the Jane Iredale side, um, but as far as the wear goes, I feel like the Jane Iredale side is wearing longer than the cover effects side. Here is a 10 hour check in on Jane Iredale and cover effects pressed mineral powders. So I felt like with the addition of the primer, it helped them both to last a little bit longer, but still they didn't have hugely long wear. Uh, they still looked pretty good at the 5 hour check-in, but by the 10 hour check-in, uh, it seemed like they had worn off the same. But just to do a head-to-head -head comparison of the two products, starting at the top with coverage. The Jane Iredale offers medium to full coverage. The Cover Effects offers sheer coverage only. Um, the finish, Jane starts out as a semi-matte finish, so I would give hers more like a satin finish to start, but it ends the day at super shiny. Cover Effects starts off as matte, but also ends the day at super shiny. Uh, for the pores, Jane Iredale is a little smoothing on its own to start out with, but then it does get shiny and accentuate them. Uh, cover effects on its own settles right into pores, accentuating them, and if you use a primer, uh, it looks nice on the pores and doesn't settle into them, but then makes them look more noticeable towards the end of the day when it gets shiny and that makes the pores look um, bigger as well. Uh, for the wear, they are about the same. I'm giving them about six hours of wear before they really start wearing off and they need to be um, <clears throat> reapplied, or uh, four hours before they become too shiny that they need to be powdered over. Uh, for the feel, uh, the Jane Iredale is a little heavier feeling. More of the powder uh, comes off on the brush and therefore gets on your skin, so it's hard to put on a lighter coating. But it, since it is medium to full coverage, it is a heavier look, it is a heavier feel, and it is also more of a drying feel and a drying 
powder to the skin. Uh, the cover effects is a little more creamy uh, when you swirl the brush into the compact. It uh, does not have dust flying everywhere and it goes on very sheer so you're getting less on your skin. It, it's harder to get a caked up look with this one and it is not drying so that is definitely a point in its favor. So for the overall roundup of these two I felt like with the Jane Iredale it was the same whether I use the primer or a tinted moisturizer or anything underneath it. It goes on and that's the way it is. Um, so the primer didn't really make it that much more long lasting, maybe helped it a couple more hours. Uh, it didn't stop it from getting shiny and um, it didn't stop it from accentuating my wrinkles and drying out my skin. With the cover effects, I felt like this one, the other products made a huge difference in how much I liked it. Um, I hated it on its own and I really, really like it with uh, the addition of the primer and the tinted moisturizer and the setting spray and then later on some mattifying powder. But if that's too many products for you to add to have something work, then you know this isn't for you. There are other powders that work better on their own in my opinion uh, that cost, um, I think it's around the same amount as the cover effects and you know, the Jane Iredale, very expensive for a powder. I am glad that I tried these two foundations, but I have to say that neither of them uh, will replace the two powder foundations that I really do love. And those are the uh, Becca Perfect Skin Mineral Powder Foundation and the It Cosmetics Celebration Foundation. Not the Illumination, that's too shiny for me. I like the, the uh, standard original celebration or the new celebration that has the SPF 50 in it. With those two, the Becca and the IT Cosmetics, they are more foolproof than either of these and they are more foolproof on their own. I do like to wear them each with a tinted moisturizer underneath because in general with powders I feel like the less powder that I can use the better. So it just gives me the ability to use a little bit less powder so that's my favorite way of using them, but each of them can be used on their own and they do perform very well on their own, much better than either of these two. They don't get as shiny. The Celebration does get a little bit shiny in the afternoon, but not to the degree of either of these two. And um, the Becca, I find, doesn't get shiny at all later in the day. I don't think if I can remember correctly. I do have full reviews on each of them, so they're in the links are in the information box below the video if you want to see those. So that's it. Kind of a disappointment for this week. As I said in the beginning, um, being on to Foundation Friday number seven and still not having anything that I can wholeheartedly recommend is really bumming me out. So. I don't know, it's summertime, I don't wear a lot of makeup in the summer, I feel like having to walk around in these makeups every day that don't look good is really uh, like, you know, just, can I say bummer again? It's a bummer, I'm, I'm hating it because it's summer, I wanna lighten up, I don't wanna wear this much makeup, I don't wanna have, you know, my skin look bad everywhere I go. So I don't know how many more of these I'm gonna do this summer. I. You know, I hate to let you down. I know you guys really love the series. Um, I'm de it's definitely not over. I told you last week that I was going to be very busy through August and that I probably wouldn't be doing any then because I was going to be on vacation and then take my daughter to college. But for the rest of July, it's only another two weeks and I don't know how much more I'm going to do of these. I do have a couple that I've recorded already, all the footage for, but again, they're not a holy grail, they're not even close, they're an epic fail, so I feel like, yeah, I could put up a couple more, but they would be epic fails. I mean, at least you guys would know what was another epic fail, but I really want to try something good, and I, I feel like I don't want to come back until I found something good. So maybe I'll try some things behind the scenes, um, and I'll go ahead and if something looks really promising from like day one when I slap it on with my fingers, <laughs> I actually like it, maybe I'll go ahead and do one in the next couple weeks. Um, I'm getting discouraged, can you tell? and I don't like getting discouraged. I like to keep this positive and upbeat and give the pros and cons and give you know somebody a solution even if it didn't work for me, maybe it will work for you. That is the uh, complete wrap up on Jane Iredale um, Pure Pressed Mineral Base and Cover Effects Pressed Mineral Powder. Thanks as always for your time everybody. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.